Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about all things going on in the world of Linux, open source, penguins, and penguin hats. I know penguin hats because I see a penguin hat. It looks terrifying. Yeah. I'm yes. here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, running the, uh, trying to guide the train. I don't know. Sometimes I make that happen. Fires everywhere. That's Joe in LA and the man on the island of Britannia. Looking quite Hello. smug. That is one favorite. <laughs> Deus. Yes. Uh, hey, everyone. How's it going? Mm. Exciting things? Exciting times? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Scale 17X starts tomorrow, and Jordan and Truggy are here. They came in on Monday, so I'm very, very excited about that. And right now, Steve Husband and Company is going to pick up Empty at the airport. So that's really, really cool. And... Uh, yeah, so we've had lots of really wonderful, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> pictures from from, <laughs> from uh, our adventures here in L.A. before scale starts. And <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's just been it was an honor to have Jordan here in my studio, my LWWLGC studio it was an honor and he even helped fix a few fix a few things. <laughs> <laughs> pictures <laughs> i'm just gonna say uh thanks for taking that bullet jordan thanks <laughs> <laughs> although the food does look nice i'll give it that oh, look at oh it. yes we have yeah see there in my oh i love that shot yay <laughs> and i also got some last week i showed the lgc stickers and this week i have my lww stickers yay thank you to foxy for the uh blender um file it was the blend file and i picked one of my favorite uh screenshots from that <laughs> right on right yay. on and What's of course up, everyone uh, can find me <laughs> green nose guy <laughs> Nope. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe. Uh oh, wait a minute. Uh -uh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, fine. There. Imagine. Oh, it's back. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, this camera seems to be uh, getting a bit pixely lately. But uh, no, I'm just coming into the final quarter of uh, my vacation days. So I'm going to make the most out of it and play even more video games than I have been up to this point. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've been playing a lot of fighter. I've been really yeah. legitimately mm -hmm. teaching myself how to use outdoor properly and kind of the I think the goal is I think the goal this is this is good, right? This is what I think I'm doing is to simplify our recording because I'm trying to get everything set up for being able to bring guests on. Mm -hmm. More on that at eleven. And fortunately, mm -hmm. FedEx with your RNG, man. <laughs> Oh, yes. Five. <laughs> five times delivery day changed. Up to including this oh, morning. Oh, my goodness. When it, <laughs> but the thing showed up. It was unwieldy. I went and helped them because it was a thing and just difficult to, like, wrangle. And the small person with the FedEx truck kind of looked at me and I was like, yeah, I came out here for a reason. Don't worry about it. I got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they asked two or three times, are you sure you got it? <laughs> i'm twice your size yes yeah, shut up <laughs> that, that's being generous um <laughs> hey uh let's just get right into this because the big news this week yes. is kernel 5.0 but Yay, kind of a fingers and toes release chill <laughs> yes yes so linux kernel 5.0 has been released with many important updates and as we mentioned in january it includes amd free sync support yay and it also includes Raspberry Pi touch touchscreen support in the mainline kernel for the official 7-inch touchscreen available at raspberrypi.org. And yes, as Van says, so because uh, uh, Linus was running out of fingers and toes to count on. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we got 5.0. Seems as a reason as any. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, I've installed it. Uh, I haven't had any major, everything just goes dark. Uh, no, uh, running it on, mm -hmm. what are we on now? 1810. No big issues. I had to use the, in all caps, do not use NVIDIA PPA because, hey, that uh. works and you need that 418 love. No major changes. Again, it's fingers and toes release. There's, uh, it does <laughs> come with Google's, I want to call it adamantium. Come on, who doesn't? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Katie>. <laughs> We're calling Adiantum. it. Yeah. Adiantum. 
their mm. new encryption storage in. I mean, that's going to be able to work on low power devices such as Android smartphones, which might be good if you want a pure Linux experience without Android. Something to keep in mind in the future for vendors. Uh, there's also a workaround in place to help combin, combin, combat memory <laughs> fragmentation. But they do warn, mm-hmm. they're like, you, you can still get around that if you're dumb enough. Yeah. And, you know, th- th- this isn't in the show notes, but there was that thing about a new um, speculative execution uh, exploit Intel. having been found in uh, Intel processors. But uh, that's for next week. Uh, speaking of Intel, uh, the Linux kernel 5.0 also brings support for uh, the 11th generation of Intel graphics. So if you have an Ice Lake cpu with the greater graphics it should now be usable in their linux no promises on any 3d acceleration to any significant significant degree but uh in other good news if you have a Turing uh gpu from nvidia it means you'll at least be able to boot into a graphical session with software rendering if you have the 5.0 kernel uh if you have one of the latest nvidia gpus which is good which is very good <laughs> And uh, I kind of want, myself personally, I kind of want Kernel 5.0 to drop into the mm-hmm. Solus repos for no other reason than it's new and I want it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Get good scrub. Uh, <laughs> really off topic with the Turing GPUs. As I saw a post on Reddit today. It was like, huh, I posted it on Twitter because uh, I have one USB, you know, they call it the virtual link. Mm-hmm. which is a USB-C port. We have a video encoder plugged into it because I didn't want to get another motherboard right now. <laughs> and apparently that thing puts out a gang of power. So if you're looking to charge your USB-C device, anything with that connector real quick, that's the one to use. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Mio <laughs> Linux. Yeah. This is a new Linux distro called Mio Linux or make it your own Linux, and it's intended for older hardware with an old school approach and is a derivative of the free of system D Debian distro dev one. Yay. And <laughs> it's so refreshing to use a lightweight distro again, one that is fast, free of system D and is under 500 megs. And uh, the user, as you can see, it's very configurable and the user gets to choose their software applications and a choice of the i3, awesome, or open box window managers, which three are three of my favorites. <laughs> so this was really, really fun to run. Um, um, I installed it on a virtual machine and then also ran it as a live CD and it, it worked beautifully. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at okay. it, and uh, mm-hmm. it's interesting. The one thing I saw was like, wait a minute. Oh, you have to set up your own partitions? How yes, retro. it's old school. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, go, go ahead. I, I can't help but feel like if this is what you're going for, and, uh, you know, it's based on Debian, as they say in the article, it's, uh, why not go for, like, Bunsen Labs, the spiritual mm-hmm. successor to Crunchbang? So granted, yeah. the, the image is a bit bigger, but it's going to save you a lot of time. Like, <laughs> a lot of time. I'll tell you, Pedro, Aww. because distributions like this are made for hipsters, and that distribution <laughs> that Yay. you brought up is far too mainstream. <laughs> People might have heard of it. <laughs> hey, it is app-based, so it's not like um, you're going to be yeah. building everything. Which, uh, it's good. Mm-hmm. I'm down with that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's All like right. using classic Debian. <laughs> Speaking of something else that's also uh, app-based, it's Linux Mint. Uh, the fork of the fork of the fork, which is, uh, yeah, they have a bit of news coming for uh, February 2019. And the big one is people kept going to them and saying, look, your website looks like it's from the 90s. Admittedly, it was made in the early noughties, but eh, yeah, Uh, it looked a bit out of date. So they decided, you know what, let's improve it a little bit. And they just grabbed one of the bootstrap profiles that they wanted, and they're working on it right now. They're also working on a new logo, which was where most of the uh, news outlets relating to Linux uh, over the past couple of weeks were picking up on. It's like, oh, it's all about the new logo. It's all about the new thing. It's like, Really? It's it, it's it's a logo change. I mean, Fedora was doing that, and they got a lot of news too. So I guess there's that. Yes. And if you have a look at the uh, the screenshot, yeah, that it's still green. 
and the screenshots that they have of the new tools that they're working on, still very green. So if you don't like that particular color scheme, you're still looking at uh, maybe something else. They're also mm-hmm. improving the APT GUI front ends, all the Mint specific ones, because they had a couple of issues. Uh, namely, it didn't uh, used to remove old kernels automatically. Yes. Like mm-hmm. some distros already do, and rightly yeah. so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they had an issue. old kernels is great, especially when the <laughs> bails on you, and you're like, oh, well, what they, a wonderful they usually They usually keep like the previous two versions. They just get rid of the one, uh, the ones yeah. after that. But yeah, and they're also working on improving Cinnamon performance, which is very welcome because I used Cinnamon on the X240 for. I don't know, a couple of months. And that was actually surprisingly all right nowadays. So good on them. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> is Mint still the hotness? Because it was for a long time. That was like, oh, this is the one to you. This is one. Uh, it's not as it's much. Still not as much. <laughs> you know, it's when still up there. Con- but... <laughs> Canonical will get too popular and they're like, oh, mm-hmm. too mainstream. We need another thing. And then Mint was the gem mm-hmm. for a few years. Now it's Arch. It's, yeah. Or it's Arch. Yeah. Arch, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arch, whoa, whoa. I got to install and that. And Tergos. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. that at 11. Let's flex yeah. on Plex. This mm-hmm. is a thing, man. Uh, jellyfin. No, it's not edible unless you really, really, really <laughs> try. Oh. It is basically built to be a... Now, there's a couple of them. Mm-hmm. A replacement for Plex for your movies, TV shows, and music. Yes. But it's completely mm-hmm. open, Jill. Yeah. So, of course, it's, as Ben says, it's an alternative to Plex. And it, it's actually a fork of MB. And uh, it it was uh, really smooth, too. Um, it, uh, it found, because uh, I, I use Plex all the time, and it actually ran, runs faster. <laughs> So that was really nice. And also thank you to the mentor in chat for recommending this for the show. It was, uh, this was a- a- awesome. It's just nice to have an open source alternative. <laughs> so I will be using this from now on. It's really cool. Jellyfin. Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. the thing about MB and I guess um, Jellyfin is is this the one uh, the one fork of MB that after MB started to do like that freemium thing of charging for certain advanced functionality, these guys went said no, here you go, there. <laughs> is this that fork or are they still walling off this uh, particular one? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, know I don't that happens know either. A lot. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Like when you brought that up in the notes, and it's like you do see that happen yeah. with some. Now, this is the beautiful thing about open source, though, is, mm-hmm. you know, you can get that fork and be like, you know what, we're going to maintain it and not mm-hmm. charge for the bits. I, I still use Plex, even though the last time I installed Plex, I think I talked about it on this show, like how sketchy they've gotten with the skip mm-hmm. button. And it's not even mm-hmm. on the front page yes. anymore. Yes. You have to like do another thing <laughs> to find these sketchy, like hidden. Like one shade off of the background skip button. Like, you need a Plex account. I'm like, listen, man, I already paid you money to get my Android mm-hmm. apps. So no, yeah. I don't. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The more the merrier. I like this. I didn't get a chance to play with it, but it does have an Android client. And that's what's important to me. Yes. Because I'm going to be watching something from a media server. It is almost assuredly going to be on a tablet somewhere around the house while I'm doing anything mm-hmm. else because I have the attention span of a matchstick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is the age of the internet, so yeah. <laughs> <We're all. laughs> um, let's talk about something that's kind of neat: a open source hearing aid. Well, the hardware for it, based on mm-hmm. a Teensy three point six. Uh, who's making this exactly? Um, Time Pen. Tim yeah. Pen. Tim Pen. Tim <laughs> They're working on that. Uh, the Rev-D hardware consists of a TD 3.6 with a BC-127 <laughs> Bluetooth module. Memes microphone and additional pinouts so you can customize it. This mm-hmm. could be game changer. Now, changer. You know, if you're looking yeah. at it, you're like, well, that's kind of big, but what, what, the what would I it. have to pay for it, Jill? This looks like <laughs> yes. thousands of dollars. I know it's only two ninety nine to to buy it, and then you can build your own as well. And um, it's, this is so wonderful, yeah. Because like Ben says, hearing aids can be tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. I know my father's was like forty thousand dollars <laughs> to get these special made <laughs> hearing aids. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <it's insane>. yeah. 
<laughs> it's kind of a wild thing. I mean, it is a bit bulky in its current form at two ninety nine. Though you can imagine, like if you couldn't get access to that, or but mm -hmm. it does digital signal processing too. I mean, this yeah. isn't just straight up hard amplification. And yeah. the only thing is, like the headphones are going to be tricky because you're going to need like well, I mean, you can get away with anything, but if you want yeah. like, molded in your headphones, and those things can get expensive, yeah. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. at work, my in your uh, A18 little Zarman, these are like the short bus cheap ones, ridiculously mm -hmm. expensive. You know, yeah. we're talking four digits, which has like, <laughs> I didn't know these things existed. Now, unless you're an audio file, then you pay like four times that for something with half the ability. But we make fun I mean, of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's assuming you don't mind looking like a complete douche and going outside with uh, Apple uh, AirPods. If that's the case, then you might be able to get away with just, you know, in-ear headphones, maybe. <laughs> well, regardless, I love seeing stuff like this with open hardware and putting it out into the community saying, hey, let's see if we can make this better together. Yeah. No, this is great. And having something this powerful and this tidy uh, as the base unit is awesome for 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. But it's... <laughs> When you get into the actual sound hardware, like the headphones to go in your ears and the microphone to pick up on, you know, what people are saying to you, that's that's when the price is still going to jump up a little bit. So yeah. you have to keep that in mind. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, yeah. Open signage, Jill. Yeah. So this is um, a new version of Libra Signage. Version 1.0.0 Beta 1 is available with lots of new features and, and uh, beta testers are needed. The web interface was completely re rewritten. It has usability improvements and lots of backend improvements. And actually, this is this is awesome because I wish I had this uh, when I was uh, needing a signage solution I was doing for a job. And um, that was when the Raspberry Pi was new and there were very few digital signage options. And I used one that was a script for the Raspi that ran in the frame buffer and it was so complex to set up. But it, it worked, but not a, not as good as Libra signage. <laughs> what are the main and, advantages? Um, yeah, it was great to have a lower for lower powered systems to be playing videos and pictures faster without GUI overhead. But Libra signage just it it works great out of the box. <laughs> signage is a very big industry. Yeah, um, it is. But you got to look at things mm -hmm. like schools when you're dealing yes. with this. That was uh, one of the things somebody in the comments on the Reddit post. Like, mm -hmm. What I need is something with a centralized server. And yeah. the developer chimed back in. He's like, yo, single web interface for creating the content. And then you can manage all the clients from one instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that was that's pretty really good. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, one other thing that they brought up in the comments for that thread mm -hmm. was like, uh, so could we have like a dedicated server image? Because that yes. would make setting up piss easy. Really, really easy. You just load up that mm -hmm. image onto whatever you're doing, be it from a server or from just a client, and there, dedicated image. Mm -hmm. That 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 would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I could finally make yeah. use of like my flat panel TV that I put it outside and just have like go away flashing on it, and I can change it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then people will actually knock on your door and ask, "Why does that say go away?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the electricity comes into play, but more on that <laughs> later. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> speaking of electricity. Yes, in case it starts coming down from the sky and you don't want to risk it by walking outside to check. I'd be a lot more yourself. concerned if it wasn't, if it was coming yes. from the left <laughs> or the right or the ground. Well, uh, well, you really don't want to go out if it is just coming down at that point. Just, you know, just. Oh, let's face it. That's anywhere. not light of the people. We're shut in, Pedro. We don't want to go out Yes, <laughs> but say uh, you're one of uh, those people who likes to have a uh, little fancy um, weather mm -hmm. application on your desktop. Well, the five folk, uh, the fine folks at uh, OMG Ubuntu have gathered a best five, which is one of those top five lists. That I guess it was a slow news day that day, but whatever. Uh, they got the best five for the GNOME uh, desktop. Which, mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever used a GNOME desktop, 
you'd probably be asking yourself, why would I want to waste even more resources with a weather <laughs> app? But hey, chances are your computer is powerful enough. You're so like a you cat. Can actually... <laughs> you can't help yourself. You're like, oh, we're talking about no. <laughs> 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 It's, yeah, that, even now that my internet is pretty good and my PC is reasonably powerful, the idea of having the weather app running in the background while I'm playing a video game, draining those resources rather than necessarily, because let's face it, like Fed mentioned, I am a shut-in. So, uh, yeah, it, eh, I don't get it. <laughs> Aww. And actually, I'm taking the Pepsi's challenge and I am running GNOME. And in fact, I've been running GNOME for the last uh, three LWWs just to, to take a, a newer version for a test run. And it, it actually has been running beautifully. Um, but I still prefer my Flexbox and Window Maker and XFCE. <laughs> but anyways, um, one of the other really nice uh, uh, weather apps was a Medio and for GNOME. And what's what nice about that one is the notifications show up in the system tray and the GNOME top bar for top bar for current weather conditions. And that was really handy. And I've also used the command line tool. It's a curl and then HTTP forward slash forward slash WTTR uh, dot IN in the command line. Um, and you can view weather that way. And I actually love that. Especially the art, the ASCII art weather clouds. Those are really cool. So that's actually my favorite app on there. <laughs> Jill, Jill, I, I'm sorry to bring this up, but uh, those uh, ASCII art clouds, they look like poop. It just looks like a pile of poop. I work with professionals. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, Pedro. The, this is interesting. But um, I, I use the XFCE4 <laughs> plugin, the weather plugin. It's yeah. built into it, and that's ultra lightweight, and it does its job, and it gets out of my way. It's no animations. It's not fancy. It barely has graphics. <laughs> then again, I just need the temperature in my test bar showing me, you know, the digits. That's it. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. The only temperature I have on my system yeah. at any point is the one of my CPU because I or, want to make sure it's not going oh, crazy. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I have that next <laughs> to each other. And sometimes, depending on the weather, you can go, wait, what? Um, I like to get really retro and walk outside. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just look out the window. That's, that's why you, places have windows. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is that. I don't trust your... windows. <laughs> <laughs> and here in SoCal, it doesn't weather much, except right now we've been having a lot of rainstorms. So I have been paying yeah. attention to it more. So these apps have been very useful. And I've also been using the weather bot on our Discord, too. That works very well. <laughs> weather now. All right. That's beautiful. Yes. It is real. Let's see. Uh, we need to get into Slice Pie. But first, uh, I want to thank everyone mm -hmm. making this possible. Everyone mm -hmm. kicking in a awesome. few extra shekels through uh, Patreon, mm -hmm. Amazon, Affiliate links, those don't cost you anything. We got a wish zone if you ended up on Frank's wall. More about that on Saturday. <laughs> Humble partner links, PayPal, internet money. Somebody sent some in last week. We're like, yay, we have yay. extra dollars. Uh, what <laughs> else? Uh, that's our wish zone. We got a couple of things on there, including that horrible thing that I hope I never end up with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Patreon, get access to our Discord. Our Discord's a dangerous place to be. If you saw the photos at the beginning, you end up meeting new people and traveling to LA to scale. <laughs> Like, mm, we got a gang of people in there flying out to do the thing, but uh, yes, you get access, but we don't put things behind paywall for live shows. IRC is tied into it. Join in for free. We just want you to come say hi. We also have t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Jill has one on. You can take yes. a look at that. It's horrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> Mesmerizing. Hell elk. Strawberry, Strawberry mayo. Strawberry <laughs> mayo. We got stickers, die cuts. Basically, it's a bunch of things you can buy yes. to make people look at it and go, you know what? I'm not even going to ask. And they're going to keep walking. <laughs> it's brilliant. We do want to thank uh, Justin, who increased yeah. his pledge on Patreon. Uh, Aw, thank you so much, Justin. We take all that cash, and we try not to purchase <laughs> clowns with it. We try to bring you a better show. So one of the things that we're going to be doing <laughs> is uh, more on that at 11, but the whole bringing in <laughs> a guest thing will probably be tested next week. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Spoilers. And by tested, Spoilers. I mean... Spoilers. Sucker. hundred <laughs> percent. If things would have lined up a little bit better, we would have brought on a guest this week. I would have got Jordan, but I thought about it and I was like, that'd be dumb. 
<laughs> like if I wanted to bring on Jordan, just like get him a kid's chair and put him in the background and give him a mic. Yeah. Yeah. No, just get just get him to sit next to Jill there. Right. Yeah. Um, like on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Enough shilling done. Thanks for making this possible, everyone. This this is a. Uh, been interesting yeah. it's going to get more interesting <laughs> considering the uh, amount of people that we have showing up so <laughs> how about awesome we get into this last spot. <laughs> why is it on a wife <laughs> <laughs> 25 <laughs> years <laughs> yes so um it's not 25 years it's 25 million sales it's uh the raspberry pi has now sold a total across you, you don't all want the generations. raspberry pi to be around at 25 years why not well, i want it to be but it hasn't yeah. been yet no. uh it's uh no it's uh 25 million across all its generations it sold a total of 25 million units which for what is for all intents and purposes a bit of a uh there it is. Mm -hmm. Prototype board type of situation. Something for you to play around with. Something for you to, uh, I don't know, try and make something really crazy. Mm. I haven't done anything with mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's really awesome to see that 25 million of them have been sold. Although, considering how the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi Zero W immediately went out of stock whenever they were on sale... Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. I can see how that would be possible, but it's a big number for any architecture. Just ask Intel or AMD when was the last time they sold 25 million of any of their CPU families? <laughs> well, you could ask Farm. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, they yeah. they've go, licensed uh, far more than like, twenty-five what, million this morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of interesting how they rolled out with that because you, when you're releasing a tinkerboard, it's kind of hard to think back to the days pre-Pi of something yeah. with that capability. We had Arduinos, yeah, so yeah. we had and Arduinos, glorified yeah. controllers, basically. But yeah. the Pi, you could. Yeah, You know, we everybody first like, I could use this for a test. Oh, no, I can't. But hey, you can at least get a GUI up and running on it. That's neat. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they didn't make a ton of them at first because you didn't really know. I was like, hey, let's make yeah. a few thousand. Poof, mm -hmm. gone. You're like, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and like like you were saying, I I actually used to use my Chumbi. That was my my Tinker device before the Pi, and of course Arduinos. And Arduinos are 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 still around doing wonderful things. Um, but one of the, the it's just amazing how far the Raspberry Pi has penetrated our society and in the most positive way. There are, mm -hmm. are two Astro Pies at the International Space Station that children from the European Space Agency, Space Agency's Mission Zero program can do software experiments, experiments on. You know, it's, it's the Raspberry Pis are in space now. <laughs> it's just really, really amazing. And uh, I've just been, you know, overwhelmed by... By, you know, not just the schools, but all the tinkers in the world and people are learning Linux because of the Raspberry Pi and just awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pe wait. Yay. Pedro. <laughs> You've had two weeks off, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't been about... to the Raspberry Pi story yet. Okay. Yeah. I was just making sure everyone <laughs> oh, knew that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> somebody <laughs> said, hey, man, I got two weeks vacation coming up. I'm definitely going to go. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there yet, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you do with the Pi? Let me tell you. You can put DOS on it. It's crazy, man. Here's a little tutorial. There's not much to it. Maybe he's like, I know how to do this. If you don't, though, I thought <laughs> yes. this is a good thing to mention. You know, it's QEMU, um, Q -E -M -U, whatever you want to call it, and free DOS. I just want to throw this out there for all my brothers and sisters out there in yes. shops. Working as the mechanics, because this is where I see these old 486s or these Packard Bells or these compacts from <laughs> 99, 2000 shoved in a quarter, like literally insulated with dust, running a DOS program. You yes. can update that. You can get it on something newer and you can still run that ancient piece of software. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, I have to, you can also play Doom. Come on. 35 bucks. <laughs> it's due. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I've done this my myself. I've I've run free DOS on QMU, <laughs> and uh, 
that that is uh it's really awesome to do and play your your old games on that way and um you actually with doom though you can install the game engine as well and then just put the 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 files in there <laughs> you can play doom on your fridge <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> So, Not all of us this have is, ice boxes. You can play Doom yeah. on Mr. Money Guns. <laughs> but this is nice to run all your old apps. I've actually ran some of my old um, Autodesk Animator Pro on uh, on my Pi with uh, Free DOS. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> kind of brilliant. Yeah. Uh, what were the, uh, mm -hmm. is it Nexus, the YouTube channel with uh, Tech Jesus? What's that one called? Uh, Gamers, Gamers Nexus? Nexus, yeah. yeah. Oh, Gamers Nexus. They're, yeah. <laughs> they've been playing around with, uh, it's kind of fun to watch. They have like a baby indie, um, Indigo, <laughs> which cool. it has entertained me to no end to watch them because that's how I always felt when I was deployed and having to watch the um, regular guys around Sun Hardware. I'm like, get away from it. Just don't touch it. But <laughs> they get Blender up and running on it. And this is a baby yeah. indie, so it's like 200 megahertz. Yeah. They're like, oh, to render this scene only took... Uh, something like 46 hours uh, yes <laughs> it totally took two days yes. <laughs> which equivalently a low-end intel cpu does it in roughly eight seconds <laughs> i thought that's interesting all right uh if you want to tell us about interesting mm -hmm. things how do they do it well, if you'd like to tell us about the interesting things that you found out going on in the world of Linux, you can submit it uh, through the contact form that we have on LinuxGameCast.com. You just hit the I like the pause, button. like it was going to be something different. Okay, here, uh, self-addressed. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you fill out the form, make sure to pick LWDW from the category box, and uh, we'll be happy to feature your story as one of the ones we talk about, or your little bit of feedback, if you have some for us. You can also mm -hmm. ask Jordan for relationship advice, or if you're a game developer and you want us to play your game for that Saturday show, What We Do, be sure to read the big text in bold at the top of the page. Nope. That's all we ask Can't for. read. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've relaxed our... Uh spam golem a little bit but mm -hmm. fair warning copy pasting a press release is like hey this is spam also if you use a bogus email address like come up with one that's believable you know <laughs> put a little bit of effort into it anyway we got one chunky chunky little uh, <laughs> bit of contact this week oh it's cody <laughs> cody and he says uh i seen that you were talking about kernel 419 and i actually use manjaro arm on my raspberry pi 3 regular model not plus and it works all right however it does stutter a lot and octopi is pretty useless as in it does not work at all it still surprises me that manjaro even has a build for mm -hmm. this thing although also lack of monster lack of monster race for retro gaming on the our pie, your retro pie users are madmen, I say. <laughs> Ooh, punctuation, Cody. Punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pie raspberries. Uh, then is all of your distro built from scratch? English, Cody. English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or belong to us the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> give me our time. Um, so what about the Raspberry Pi stuff? What's going on there? Yeah, mm -hmm. so we were talking about the uh, Raspberry Pi... Uh, updated kernel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the updated kernel for uh, the Raspberry Pi official Raspbian was now 4.19. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, that's what he's going off of and saying that he runs Manjaro on his Raspberry Pi 3. <laughs> Why you do that? I don't know. <laughs> well, you heard Arch is... <laughs> That, that's our trade. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's you who runs the latest. <laughs> By all means, run Arch on your Raspberry Pi, not Manjaro. <laughs> and I threw that. Uh, <laughs> basically, what it boils down to I mean, not everything I do is from scratch. I run 1810 right now. What do you think? I love Canonical only because I give it a hard time because I'm using mm -hmm. it trying to do an LTS, but the gloves are off right now. I'm on 1810. Mm -hmm. uh, what it does boil down to, because Cody hit me on uh, Twitter multiple times, it's abuse. Uh, <laughs> the you got to look at things a little bit differently. You you can't really judge a person by what distro they run, especially if they've yeah. been <laughs> in the game for decades. Because 
We've you know, run for, all of them. <laughs> well, it's not even that, you know. It's not even that. It's uh, distro identity. You can't make assumptions because when you're dealing with, for a lot of people, you're looking at a distribution as this is my home now and I need it to come, you know, prefabricated. I need it to look like this and I need at least 99%. Maybe I'll install a few things through the repository and I'll be good. Then you have this other darker class from the old ages that are like, well, what do you look for at a distro? I need it to boot the console X if I'm feeling lucky. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's really all you're looking for. Now, ultimately, you want like long-term support or something like that, which is why I think Canonical, good job, 10-year support. Good luck keeping that up, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I need to install a new kernel or if I need to, you know, build video drivers or anything like that, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Before the show, Pedro, what was I doing? Cloning mm -hmm. a git, building it, and starting a um, OBS socket. backup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Ten minutes before the show, git clone was typed on this box. But it's handy to be able to do that because, like, oh, I want the new thing. All right, I'll put the new thing in. Linux is good like that. You don't have to be yeah. reliant on, mm -hmm. I've always said, you can run Hannah Montana Linux, and I'm fine with that because, you know, 10 hours later, it's going to be whatever I need it to be. <laughs> yes. uh, so uh, you said not to judge people based on their choice of distro. Can we judge people based on their choice of desktop environment? <laughs> Wait, what, why do you just want to take another swipe at GNOME at the end of the show? <laughs> yeah, Maybe. <I> <laughs> yes, you can. Anybody who doesn't run XFCE is being foolish. How about that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Use what you want. I'm a big fan of like how I organize things is I, I had, this is something I had to realize later in life. It's if the end result is all the same and it's a good quality end result, however, the wires are crossed and the potions brewed in between that. That's personal that choice, open, man. That opened the server cabinet. <laughs> I'm just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't need to jump on people like, oh, this person does yeah. something differently than I do. I'm like, well, do they accomplish the same thing at the end? And like, yeah. Then I'm like, quit yes. trying to like, it's not wrong because it's different than the way you do it. That's yeah. what I'm trying to get across. Exactly. Exactly. Keep that in mind, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and have a great <laughs> rest of the week. We'll be back Saturday. Yeah. But until yes. then, um, how about <laughs> we roll some credits? Yay! <laughs> Credits! Yay! Aww! <laughs> Yay to our wonderful We're executive Theron, producers! Foxy, Andrew, Empty Atomic, Mike, Barbara, and Drummer, and Aldeus. Got it! Yes, Nailed you it. got it, Sven! Nailed it! <laughs> executive producers! <laughs> I was going to hit pause if I didn't. Producers, Jupiter Broadcasting, Dementor, Mike, Renald. <laughs> I didn't get through that part. <laughs> The Sildak, Kazus, North Ranger, Igor, Mir, Jake, Vlanir, <laughs> Zoe, Jack, Eric, Todd, Reineker, Mini Jack, Massavoni, Frostclaw. <laughs> uh, Jack David. and Mini Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I broke Jill. Sorry. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.